Today we are going to learn about solving quadratic trig equations. The national five essential skills are solving linear trig equations. Now that we've recapped in national five skills and solving linear trig equations in degrees, we will now look at solving quadratic trig equations. Key steps are again to rearrange and make sine, cos or tan the subject but this may involve factorising or taking a square root because we'll have a quadratic term. We still need to draw a cast diagram to identify the quadrants where the angles lie. We still have to use exact value triangles or a calculator to obtain our angle X. And the final step is also the same in that we need to find the angles in each quadrant and we need to ensure they lie within the range that is stated. Example 1. Solve 4 sine squared x equals 3 for x lying between 0 and 360 degrees. So the first step is still to rearrange to get sine squared x on its own. So sine squared x is equal to 3 over 4. Now we write the squared um, term in between sine and x. But this is exactly the same as sine x all squared. Therefore, the opposite of squaring is to take the square root. So to make sine x a subject, we have to square root both sides. And if we square root any number, please remember that you all get a positive and a negative answer. Finally, we'll also need to simplify our fractional root. Therefore, um, that will be the same as the square root of 3 over root 4, but root 4 can be simplified to 2. So rearranging this here, we have sine x equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2. Now that we've got sine x a subject, we draw our cast diagram. Um, as we're looking for sine x equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2, we're looking for an angle in every single quadrant. From there, we do inverse sine of root 3 over 2, or we check our exact value triangle. So we're looking for an angle that has an opposite of root 3 with the hypotenuse is 2, that is going to be 60 degrees. Therefore, the angle in the first quadrant will be 60 degrees. To obtain the angle in the second quadrant is 180 minus 60. To obtain the angle in the third quadrant, 180 plus 60. And finally, the fourth quadrant, 360 minus 60. This will give a final answer and four angles, which are 60, 120, 240 and 300 degrees. Example 2. Solve 8 cos squared of 2x minus 30 equal to 6. And this time, x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 180. So first step is to rearrange. So we will take the 8 over and divide. And from there, we can simplify 6 over 8 to 3 over 4. Also, we need to square root because we have cos squared of 2x minus 30. So we're going to square root both sides. And again, we have root 3 over 4. And when we square root, we have a plus and a minus answer coming out. The root of 3 over 4 can be simplified down to root 3 over 2. So just like in the last question, I need to draw our cast diagram. But again, we're looking for an angle in all four quadrants because we're looking for cos equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2. Now this is the exact value, so drawing an exact value triangle out. We're looking for an angle that has an adjacent of root 3 and hypotenuse 2, which is going to be 30 degrees. So from there, we'll obtain our four angles in each quadrant. So 30 degrees, 180 minus 30 will give us 150. 180 plus 30 will give us 210. And 360 minus 30 will give us 330 degrees. However, this is the solutions to 2x minus 30. 
We need to next add 30 to each of the angles to get 60, 180, 240, 360. And that's for 2x. So to get 1x, we'll need to then divide every angle by 2. So the final solution is x equals 30 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees and 180 degrees. However, looking at our range, we were not asked for x equal to 180 degrees. It was x less than 180 degrees. So we'll need to discard that last angle and write our final solution as 30, 90 and 120 degrees. Example 3. Here we need to solve 2 sine squared x minus sine x equals 0. This time x lies between 0 and 180 degrees. Now we can rewrite 2 sine squared x minus sine x in terms of just x's. It would look like 2x squared minus x equals 0. Sometimes this is easier to do this at the side of your page to help factorise it. So we need to factorise here. So having a little look, we've got a common factor of x. So if I take x outside, we'll have x bracket 2x minus 1. So remember, x is just the same as sine x. So going back to our original question, that factorised would be sine x bracket 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. Now here what we need to do is split each term up and equate each to 0. So we first of all will do sine x equal to 0 and in a second we will look at the bracket equal to 0. Now sine x equal to 0 we need to think about our graph. So if you even draw a quick sketch of your sine graph you will see clearly that there are three places the graph hits 0. Now, because we are only looking at x between 0 and 180, x will um, solve to be 0 degrees or 180 degrees. And that's us finished that part. From there, I'm going to make 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. We need to rearrange to make x the sine x the subject. So I'll take the 1 over and add it and then divide by 2. So here we have sine x equal to positive 1 half. And again, because it's equal to positive 1 half, I need to find out which quadrants that's going to lie within. So it's positive, which will mean it will lie in the first and the second quadrant. And also sine x equal to half is an exact value. So if we draw my exact value triangle out, I'm looking for an angle that has an opposite of 1 hypotenuse of 2, which would be 30 degrees. So sine x equals a half will solve to give x equals 30 degrees and 180 minus 30, which is 150. And finally, we just state our final solution with all four angles at the bottom. So x is 0, 30, 150 or 180 degrees. And always have a double check that that lies within the range stated which it does. Example 4. This one is um, slightly different again. We have 3 cos squared x minus 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0 and that's to solve for x lying between 0 um, and 360 but it has to be less than 360 degrees. Now looking at this um, trig equation that we need to solve, we can see there's an x squared term, there's an x term and then a number at the end. Again, we can put this in terms of letters, 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 equal to 0, if it helps you to factorise it. This will factorise to 3x plus 1 and x minus 1 equal to 0. Now remember the x terms are really essentially cos x, so going back to our original question, it will factorise to 3 cos x plus 1, cos x minus 1 equals 0. And again, what we have to do is take the two brackets separately to solve them equal to 0 and solve two different trig equations. So taking the first bracket there, 
we have 3 cos x plus 1 equals 0. And this will rearrange to make cos x the subject, rearranging to give negative 1 third. So we next need to find out where we're looking for angles. And as it's equal to negative 1 third, we're looking for angles in the second and third quadrant. Using our calculator, because that's not an exact value, we have the angle of 70.5 degrees that we're working with. So the angle in the second quadrant is going to be 180 minus 70.5, but the angle in the third quadrant will be 180 plus 70.5, which gives two solutions, 109.5 degrees and 250.5 degrees. We'll then go to our second bracket, cos x minus 1, and equate it to 0, which we'll rearrange to give cos x equal to 1. Here it is a good idea to draw your cos diagram out on the graph. So we can clearly see that cos x is equal to 1 in two places. However, we were only to solve this trig equation for x less than 360. Therefore, we're going to discard 360 degrees and we just have x as 0. Final step is to state in order all of our angles. So we have x equal to 0 degrees, 109.5 degrees and 250.5 degrees. Now try these examples for yourself. Please pause the video. And the solutions are, for the first question there, we have x is 30 or 150 degrees. And for the second question, x is 19.5, 160.5, 194.5 or 345.5 degrees. So today we've learned about solving quadratic trig equations. It follows a lot of the same steps as linear trig equations. The main um, extension is that the rearranging at the start is slightly different, where we may need to factorise or take the square root. We still draw a cast diagram and identify quadrants. We look at the exact value triangle or a calculator to obtain an angle X and we find the angles in each quadrant and we ensure we check the lie within the range.